I've got interesting news for you today. Stay with us for all things apostolic. Welcome. This is All Things Apostolic. I'm Dr. Nathaniel Wilson. We're here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with All Things Apostolic, and we are glad you're with us today on this um, October the 16th, 2023, Monday. And um, thank you for stopping by and being with us today for a few minutes. A lot of exciting things happening. One of the things that happens here is there's news and views and commentary and teaching and uh, and addressing the issues that we feel like need to be addressed. Uh, so we're glad that you've joined us today. If this is your first time, don't make it your last. We want you to be with us again. A lot of good things happening. Yesterday I was preaching in Lathrop, California. Um, when I was uh, in college a long, long time ago, many decades ago, when I was in college, I worked in Lathrop, and it was a lazy little village um, on the outskirts of Stockton, California. And um, I had a job there, and so I went back and preached there the first time I preached in Lathrop in about first time I've been in Lathrop in in years and um, what a difference it is what a difference it in all of California if I was younger and I was thinking about starting a church one of the top places I would consider would be Lathrop because it's um it's in the San Joaquin Valley, but it's directly what would that be east of San Francisco and the Bay Area, and uh, the Bay Area has become so expensive that people are trying to get out of there where they can have uh, uh, buy a home and and uh, can be able to afford things, and many of them will still still or they did California is enough people now, but they continue to commute to their work in. San Francisco, and then some, of course, started doing their work at home. At any rate, uh, Lathrop has grown to be a significant-sized city, and all around it has grown outside. So you've got kind of a tri-city area of Manteca and Tracy and Lathrop, um, and it's a fast-growing area, um, and the churches are growing. In Manteca, the church is growing, and in Lathrop, I was with the Mother Life Center, Pastor Nathaniel Camarina. He and his wife are doing a terrific job there. Uh, they took a little, very small group of people eight years ago. It has grown. They have a, 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 a tremendous congregation. We had robust apostolic Pentecostal church yesterday, and uh, and we preached, and good things happened, people in the altar. Uh, so... They are progressive. They are, they are seeing things happen, and they're going to build a great church there in Jesus' name. And then we uh, uh, we went out and had a bite to eat with them. We came back home, and I uh, was in church last night. Uh, great service. Pastor Randy Williams preached all the way from Fort Myers, Florida. He was with us. Uh, he had been out here preaching a conference. Uh, what is it? Midnight Cry is the name of the conference, and it's been in Stockton for about 26 years, I think. It's uh, um, it started out as a, uh, I think a Spanish speaking conference, but now it's it's English. But it was packed. I saw pictures. I didn't get a chance to go. I saw pictures to where, I mean, it was it was literally like standing room only, uh, in a very large building. So. He preached there, and then on Sunday night, he came and preached at The Rock. What a tremendous job he did. Did you know that the the, the coat of arms uh, for the nation of Australia has on it an emu and a kangaroo, and that the reason that they chose the emu and the kangaroo is because they are two animals that don't back up. They only go forward. So... That's what that's that's pretty good. 
that's what we need to be doing. We need to be not backing up. We need to be going forward. So anyway, Pastor Williams preached uh, outstanding. Uh, I think yesterday there were six baptized and uh, three or four received the Holy Ghost um, in our church. And we're just really excited and humbled and thankful to God for what he's doing. Uh, more people are going to receive the Holy Ghost this week. We believe in Jesus' name. And uh, also, also, we had a first yesterday in the Rock Church of the Sierras, which is in the foothills up above Sacramento. Uh, they had their first one received the Holy Ghost yesterday. They just started about three weeks ago. And uh, the first one received the Holy Ghost yesterday. Uh, they had a good little number in church. I don't know exactly how many, uh, but it, it was a good number. People are coming. New people were there yesterday. It's never been there before. Some of them never been to a Pentecostal church in their life were there yesterday, weeping and praying and seeking the face of God. Um, and uh, a new one, a brand new one, the first one in the new church received the Holy Ghost. This is a church plant from the Rock Church in which uh, Boston and Haley Young, uh, Pastor Young's son and daughter-in-law, they are our daughter in love. They are uh, starting this church, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's just off and running. And uh, it was terrific. And then... Um, the, the one that got the Holy Ghost got baptized last night. So, so um, yeah, good things are happening. We thank God for all of this that's taking place, and uh, we're looking forward to greater revival, greater revival. You know, a life goes on, and uh, people get older, and new babies are born, and generation to generation passes. And uh, in that light, there is a good old friend that has passed away, and that is Pastor Harvey Cantrell. Well, now he would have been Bishop Harvey Cantrell for the last uh, number of years, but uh, Bishop Harvey Cantrell for many years was the, uh, he pastored in uh, Hanford for many years, and then he pastored in Goshen for many years, which are just about eight miles in part. Uh, and uh, in both those churches, they were thriving under his ministry. He um, uh, he was, for I don't know how many years, he was the secretary of the Western District of the United Pentecostal Church. And um, when I was a boy, we had sections, and in our section was his, his actually he was a assistant pastor at that time to his father-in-law, William Garrett, tremendous old-time preacher. And uh, the Garrett was his father-in-law, and uh, uh, he was our sectional youth leader. So uh, we saw him at youth camp, we saw him at youth rallies, we saw him at different places, and became very dear friends. So he uh, he's he's a great guy. He had a son named Galen. Galen is now the district superintendent in Northern California of the United Pentecostal Church. Uh, a tremendous young man and his wife. We are thankful for them, and we are saddened to hear of his passing. However, we don't have any doubt where he's at, and that if he could speak back to us right now, he would be saying, look, guys, don't be crying for me. But we will, because we miss him, and in our flesh, we're still attached to to uh, geographical location in our connection with light. And so... Um, when someone passes on, there is a gap. There's a missing there that we just can't avoid as human beings. So I don't know exactly when his funeral is yet. This just happened. Uh, but it will be, uh, I'm sure, sometime this week. And um, if we, when we find that out, we'll be glad to let everybody know. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, this is a kind of a historic passing in California. And uh, when I was young, I preached revivals for him, had a very long revival with him in Goshen, um, and uh, God moved in a tremendous way. Just some just some great old memories. When I say Goshen, California, and Hanford, California, that's only about um, uh, five miles and 10 miles, respectively, maybe 15 miles from Visalia, where I was born. 
So this was my old stomping grounds, and then I was raised up around Fresno and in Kermit. And so that the Thelmet area is there is within a probably a fifty mile radius. So uh, uh, old old stuff for me. The church in Tulare, which is right there in that same area, uh, my uncle and my aunt uh, pastored many years ago, like late nineteen twenty, way back. My grandmother pastored in Exeter, which is right there about five miles from Visayet, um, and maybe eight miles from Goshen, uh, pastored there in the late 20s. Uh, and so anyway, there's a lot of roots there. Uh, my father's family came to Visayet in 1898 on a train from Texas, and uh, uh, the family was raised there a whole slew of Wilsons were there in that town and uh, and were in that church. All of her boys were in that church and uh, her girls married people, of course, married, uh, went to other cities, but they uh, lived for God also. So, um, so great heritage. Uh, grandma's buried there. She was, she died in 1933 at 60 years old. She uh, didn't have to die probably, but they didn't have, she had faith in God and she just probably didn't go to the hospital. And so the old house where she died is, is is still there. I've been in it and seen the room that she passed away in. She's the one that went to Azusa Street in 1907. So all of this comes by, uh, a kind of moving back into I thought pattern um, when I think about Brother Cantwell because we were in that same area for for all of these years, way back, way back in 19... 19- 14, I think it was, my father sat on the front or on the back of a wagon and they, he turned the crank that put oil on Highway 99, which has been a major thoroughfare in California for many decades. It is probably the major thoroughfare, definitely is through the valley from south to north and vice versa. So, um, yeah, it just goes back the long ways. So anyway, so much for all of that. Uh, last year we just completed, or no, no, last week we just completed our second accreditation site visit. It went very well. Uh, we have, we've already got that report. They do not give you a report of whether you got candidacy or whether you got uh, initial accreditation or pre-accreditation or nothing. They don't, they don't tell you. They used to, they would tell you, the site team would say, we don't know what the accreditation commission is going to say, but this will be our recommendation. And they would tell you what the recommendation was, which is usually what the uh, accreditation commission went off of 90, I don't know, 98% of the time, just almost always. Uh, so anyway, the accredited, uh, accreditation commission has told them, instructed them that anymore, you can't tell what uh, your recommendation is going to be. You can just give them you can give them compliments on what they've done. You can give them recommendations for improvement, but you cannot tell them what your report to us is going to do. So we're in the dark. We we don't know, but we do know we have got a little word squeaked out that we did very well. Well, that's pretty big commendation, and uh, we are confident as a result of that and a result of the fact that we were ready. We could answer all the questions we have. We dotted the I's and crossed the T's to a great extent. So uh, we overall, it went very, very well. Tomorrow, I will be, uh, uh, you will, if you'll join us, you'll hear an interview that was done on Friday uh, with myself and Pastor Yona and Pastor Nathaniel Wershon from First Pentecostal Church in Durham, North Carolina. And um, he was here for the board meeting. The board meets the accreditation commission. And, uh, and so he was for that. He was also here for a wedding for a young man in his church to a young girl in the Rock Church. So the three of us talked about things. We talked about holiness. We talked about um, uh, good things for a few minutes. And so you're welcome to join us tomorrow. It's going to be a great time. I think you'll be interested in it. And we will see you then.